The Darby Wind Cave is locally famous. It's pretty interesting. It's a good little hike, maybe a couple hours depending on your family size and your fitness. Uh, sometimes I see people with real little, little kids going out here. So you have to determine whether it's good for your children or not, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> I've seen some little kids go out here and crank it out. But do note it can get pretty toasty over here, so make sure to bring water, bear spray, yeah, right there, all the necessary first aid ch things that you might need for a little jaunt in the forest. A lot of people underestimate this hike. I've seen them back there with a empty half liter bottle of water and they're sweating and looking like they're about to pass out and throw up. So don't underestimate this hike even though people say on the web that it's very short and easy. So just as a warning to you. So what I'm going to do is fire up the GoPro, give you a hyperlapse and take you on a tour of Darby Canyon to the Darby Wind Cave and we'll see what it's like.
As you can see, it's a bit sweaty walking up the trail even in the morning. But this switch back here, which is marked on my trail map in the Jackson Hole Hiking Guide, you can see Darby Wind Cave right over there. It's big. It's like, oh, will, will we know it when we see it? Huh, believe me, you'll know. About an hour and ten minutes to hit the uh, little creek that pours out of the cave, which you can see right above me. Now, I don't follow the creek up. There is a trail here. Make sure, of course, not to uh, cut the switchbacks because it causes erosion and really wrecks the trail. Make sure to try and stay on the standard trail here and. 
continue making your way up to the cave. And just a few feet from the creek is this memorial plaque to several, I believe it's Girl Scouts who died years and years ago with a lightning strike right in the area. There is another trail over there, we'll explore that soon. But, yeah, that was interesting because several years ago I was here with one of the last survivors from this incident, an older lady with a big group with her, it was pretty interesting written up in the Teton Valley newspaper. So I'm gonna try and continue and making my way on here and show you how to get up to the cave. And in about an hour 15, voila, Darby Wind Cave. Now, this area is pretty interesting. There are two sets of steps, uh, one to the left, one to the right. Uh, either option is viable. However, you're going to have to get over this little uh, waterfall that comes out of here. And early in the season, the water is really pouring. You got to be really careful. It's uh, easy to get smashed up here. So what I'm going to do is make my way up this rubble just a bit go across here and then catch the right side and see how we do Once you made your way up the stairs, where people are here, you'll stick to the right side, not the left side as you're coming into the cave. You come up this right side, you'll hit a few wet spots, and if there's a lot of water, it's all limestone, so it is slick. At this point, you'll be able to go in quite a ways before needing a light, but I like to get it out now, get it all prepared, have my backup flashlights. I'm not gonna go far, just through the small opening, because past the first drop. I'm a soloist, so you don't want to get stuck in here. Happened to a couple of years ago and almost died. So uh, take it seriously. It's super beautiful. Just be cautious.
as you can see back here, that is the entrance to the cave. And it is pretty sizable. Now past here, you can see the cave. I'm gonna walk around here. And for my camera to focus, and there you go. So what I'm going to do is put my headlamp on and continue walking into the small entrance up there, and then I'll talk to you a little bit more about the cave experience. After just a little short walk up, you come to the first crawl here. I can usually crab walk it, I don't have to put my hands down, but as you can see, no helmet. And even though I should have a helmet in a cave, I didn't bring it with the logic that it won't tempt me to go any farther in the first drop off and do anything silly. Because, well, I'm by myself. I have my four light sources. I have water. I know, uh, people know where I are. Or I are. <laughs> I am. But, you just don't want to do it. It's uh, very easy to get injured and trapped in here and lost. Even though it's theoretically not a big system, people have become lost in here and, uh, can take, uh, th several hours to get out. But, by myself, if I'm injured and get stuck in here, it could be really rough, so I'm only going to go crawl in there, show you what it's like, and then uh, we'll look around a bit, and then we'll call it good. Interestingly, when it's totally quiet, you can actually hear air rushing through this porthole because there's another end of the cave here. And that's why it's called Wind Cave. You won't feel it down there because the air flows above your head. But as soon as you get up here, I put my jacket on, it's much chillier. Also, you can hear water dropping. And I can also hear some folks coming up. So what I'm going to do is go through there, put my head or put my headlamp on, go through there, show you what it's like. It's pretty exciting. Interestingly, one of the acoustic effects in this cave is that when people get farther away, you can only hear the low frequencies of their voice. It sounds really weird. It sounds just like burr, 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 burr. So it's kind of cool. As you can see, that first passage was a little bit crawly. Then the second passage here, you can stand up. It's not too crazy. Then it gets a little bit bigger, and we're going to continue on a bit.
here's the first mini drop. It's about uh, eight or nine feet down there, imminently crawlable. You can see those other folks up there. Diagonal passages. And that's the end of the line for me. You can see, you gotta crawl down and round it up there. And that's that. Pretty interesting. Tempting, but no. All right, start crawling out. So if you're claustrophobic, <laughs> definitely not the place to be. We can turn around, start heading back out. It's a, uh... it's cold in here. I can see my breath, but there's a constant breeze. It's icy up ahead. No helmet, multiple people, knee pads. Nope, doesn't make sense. So I will turn around, call that good. Tempting, but uh, that's why I didn't bring all the gear to prevent me from doing anything silly. So I'm gonna head back along this little pinch here and start heading back out. Here we are, light again. So it was quite a little adventure just to go back to where you gotta crawl and tunnel up and go over. That's the end of the line for me as a soloist. 
As you can see, you gotta go through this little tunnel. I, I've crab walked it before, but with gloves, I can just hand walk it. So I'm gonna flip over the GoPro, crawl out, get into the bigger space, and uh, tell you a little more about that. A little bit more about this. My lips are cold because it's cold in here. <sighs> As you can see, Darby One Cave is quite the adventure. When you look way back there, somewhere, you can see far, far back, so it's... <laughs> Pay attention to where you're walking. It was a fun time there. Uh, no helmets, uh, no knee pads, and no other people. That's uh, that little crawling up. That's the end of the road for me. But uh, hopefully you got to see it and enjoyed the adventure. I'm going to work on another trail here. Uh, hopefully to include in the Jackson Hole Hiking Guide, but the Darby Wind Cave is definitely part of it. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Aaron Lindstow. I'm a polar explorer and professional adventurer. Please like and comment on the video, and if you found this useful, subscribe to the channel. As always, links below to the guidebooks and everything else used in this video. Thank you very much for watching.